Yo, what's going on guys? John here. Obviously, I'm not at home. I'm actually in my car on my way to my parents' place. Uh, I have to meet them for something uh, important. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do a live match review, but I am here to give you guys my thoughts and just, you know, talk to you guys about what happened because Manchester United just absolutely got slapped by Aston Villa 1-0 in the Premier League at Old Trafford. I say absolutely slapped because despite only conceding one goal, Manchester United were absolutely piss poor and we completely deserved to lose that game on any stretch of the imagination it was an awful abysmal performance and the one word that i used constantly to describe their performance was frustrating throughout the entire 90 minutes manchester united couldn't come up with anything but it wasn't had anything to do with the fact that we looked like we lacked in creativity it was just so frustrating every single <clears throat> Every single transition, every single possession play, there was always that one poor pass, one uh, misplaced opportunity, one short run, one long run, one overhead pass, one underhead pass, one shot that skewed over the top. There was always something that frustrated this this team. And at the end of the day, it's nobody else but the players and the manager to pull, to blame. But uh, we really didn't see any answer <clears throat> from that side. Unfortunately, Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire had to be pulled off because of injuries. And of course, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, therefore, consequently had to make uh, injury for substitutions. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with the manager. And we really wanted to see Ole come up with some sort of change, especially when the second half started the same way that we ended the first half. We looked like we were just so frustrated, not just in terms of you know the performance but the players on a, on a microscopic level look so frustrated with themselves every single uh, uh, possession play looks so uh, uh, uncomfortable and i was excited to be quite honest with you i was excited this was one of this was a, a very strong 11 probably one of the strongest 11s that Manchester United could field and Mason Greenwood especially in this season he looks like he's up for it he looks like he was he looks like he was more convic he looks like he was more convinced in terms of the decision making. He looked like he he knew what he wanted. If he was going to release a shot, he was going to release a shot. If he was going to make a pass, he was going to make a pass. So in that respect, I was very happy to see uh, Mason Greenwood, you know, play with a bit more conviction, play with like he's up for the challenge. But I think that's kind of just from an ideological sense because in every other aspect, Mason Greenwood was just frustrating everyone around him. He was just taking shot after shot after shot that was just uh, completely forced in many accounts. Certain uh, certain situations demanded and warranted a shot, so I give him that. And I was actually supportive of the decision that he was making. <clears throat> but there was a clear opportunity where Bruno was wide open in a 2v2 situation. Literally could have shot it in any direction and it would have went in. And Mason Greenwood didn't keep his head up and he could not pick out a pass and he just decided to go for the shot. And that was pretty much the story of Manchester United's performance throughout the entire 90 minutes. It was so bad. It was so bad. If you're looking at it from each third, I thought David De Gea had a decent performance. He had one error, one miscommunication with Harry Maguire, which I felt like both of them just completely botched that. The botched it, um, and it was pretty much a scary moment. But we managed to keep that. Uh, we managed to keep Aston Villa out uh, in that situation. But other than David De Gea, the back four didn't really, uh, really seem like. You know, there was anything special about them. I thought that Harry Maguire had a decent game in the first, maybe opening 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden he just started completely going downhill. And then, of course, the injury subbed him out. Uh, the only positivity in that back four today I saw was Aaron Wambasaka, and that just kind of goes to show you uh, how weird and frustrating this game was. Aaron Wambasaka was great on the ball. There were so many times when Aston Villa, especially with Target, uh, Matty Cash, and a lot of those players, just flooded down that their respective left hand and our respective right hand side. And I was really honestly thinking, oh my God, Aaron Wan is just going to get overpowered here in terms of uh, losing possession under the pressure. But he did so well, linking up very well with Rafa Raphael Varane. Honestly, for me, if there was one positive to take away from this game, was literally their link up play. And that's not even link up play going forward. That's just link up play in the back, keeping the ball in possession, you know, sustaining the pressure. They were all, they were getting uh, outmanned two v three and uh, they just linked up so well and and Aaron Wambasaka did this almost like I almost want to call it a, a match trademark performance where he just take the ball in the first touch he just he'll just slam it all the way across to Luke Shaw on the left hand side and I th I, I love that it, it showed composure and it showed a bit of class so I, in that respect I was happy but other than that a subpar performance in terms of an overall approach uh, you don't expect them to score goals but I kind of expected a little bit better from Harry Maguire you need the leaders and they didn't really lead. Out from the back midfield department poor i thought that i can't i can't believe i'm saying this but i thought fred had a better game than mctominay lots of people seem to disagree let me know in the comments because you guys know how i feel about uh with, about fred but scott mctominay was ineffective for me i felt like fred had a much more uh, robust performance in terms of his uh, involvement on the ball and off the ball he was making lots of cl uh, crucial 
uh, interceptions. He was getting onto the challenges. He was making uh, he was making tackles. He had an absolute shitter of a shot, which I don't know why he's... He, all they should just be like, yo, you should never fucking shoot a shot ever in your life because he has no shot. But for some reason, he just... He just I th- I, and he laughs after every shot, which pisses me off even more. But <laughs> but other than that, I honestly thought that Fred had a better performance than Fred, uh, than uh, McTominay. And that's, that says a lot about f- the game today. Um, we didn't control the midfield department at all. I thought we just got outplayed in the entire park. They weren't great. Let's be honest. Aston Villa weren't great. But Manchester United were worse. And our forward department, Cristiano Ronaldo completely dried up. The, the, he had no service whatsoever. Mason Greenwood was just slamming shots galore. Paul Pogba looked fucking lost today. And Bruno Fernandes, yeah, he was getting decent opportunities here and there. But he wasn't the, he wasn't the Bruno Fernandes of the old. He it, it looked frustrating from all departments. And I was really particularly upset at Oli for not bringing on Jaden Sancho. I felt like this was the kind of game where Jaden Sancho needed at least 30 minutes to come on and make an impact. This is the kind of game where if he can keep the ball to feet and play nice little short interchanges, one twos with Bruno and, and Cristiano Ronaldo in the 18 yard box, I felt like that was the perfect opportunity to try and get something, try to dismantle this team, try to unlock that team, and try to reignite a spark in a team that's just been filled with frustration throughout the entire match. But he kept Greenwood on, and Greenwood. Fair credits to him, like I mentioned before. I'll, I'm okay with him taking these decisions, but it was so, so one-dimensional, and it, it was kind of easy for Aston Villa to just kind of keep him locked away, and it was so uh, it was so frustrating. And that's pretty much the word that describes and sums the performance. Uh, five defeats of, what was it, five wins in 11 games? That's a really poor stat from, you know, we could talk all you want about the away record and whatnot, but... Game a, a defeat against West a defeat against West Ham obviously in the Carabao Cup which isn't that big of a deal but obviously it still goes to show there is a defeat in this team defeat in, uh, against Young Boys and defeat against Aston Villa today at home not good not good I told you guys before this and I'll say it again and then this is where I'll kind of leave it this is always make make or break season and if he doesn't continue if he doesn't produce this season with a trophy then we real questions have to be asked I'm, I'm just keeping it 100 I don't care what you guys say questions will have to be asked and if he doesn't perform uh, if he doesn't you know grind out these kinds of results albeit unfair to him because of the injuries and whatnot but if he doesn't grind out these results then unfortunately then it at the end of the day we are going to have to start asking questions but that's way too early doors right now i'm obviously premature but it, the responsibility at the end of the day falls with the manager and as much as i don't want to put this blame just simply on him everybody deserves to take a blame for this kind of defeat um yeah uh, don't talk to me about the Ollie out shit because that's just too early for me. But it's not, it's not, not even too early. We shouldn't even be talking about that. We should just continue to support our manager and support this team. But it was a difficult game today. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you guys have not yet done so. Hit that notification bell so you're always locked in. I'm actually going to have to get on the road again. So uh, I'm going to be safe. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.